The rival between two of rap music's biggest stars, Drake and Kendrick Lamar, is entering a dramatic new chapter. Drake's company has filed two legal actions accusing Universal Music Group, which represents both of the artists, of defamation and illegally boosting Lamar's viral song that targeted Drake, Not Like Us. I avoid with this. They not like us. They not like us. They not like us. But Drake was having none of it and still isn't. Not like us, Kendrick's Drake Diss had 96 million streams in one week and went number one on the US charts. But Drake's now claiming his record label, Universal Music Group and Spotify artificially boosted those streams. Drake is pissed Kendrick won their beef and he is taking it to court because of it. Y'all, this story is insane. According to Drake, his label worked with Kendrick to ensure he got humiliated and lost the entire thing, but bought in Kendrick's streams. Now, Kendrick gave Drake such a huge L that Drake is looking into possibly filling a deformation lawsuit. But does Drake really have a case or is he just a sore loser? Join me today as we look into why the loser of the biggest beef in the past decade is seemingly heading to court to cry foul. Drake, has, Drake is the first guy to have 20 songs with at least a billion streams. Yes, sir. It's hard to say there's a rapper bigger mm -hmm. worldwide than Drake. Right. Drake, bro, okay, he got one up on you. It happens. Mm -hmm. You take this kind of measure? Sue, unless you have been living under a rock, you definitely have heard of the Drake and Kendrick beef. I mean, this beef will go down in history as one of the greatest beef of all times. This isn't just your average music rivalry. It's one of the most iconic and complex beefs in hip hop history. And just when we thought it was over, Drake has come out and showed the world that he isn't over it at all. Arguably, the biggest song to come from this beef has to be Not Like Use. I mean, the song is so big that both the song's audio and video are sitting at over 178 million views each. That's not even mentioning that the song has close to 1 billion streams on Spotify alone. The song on its own basically won Kendrick the beef, according to most people on the internet. But as it turns out, Drake feels that the fight wasn't fair. You see, Drake recently initiated legal action against Universal Music Group and Spotify for what he claimed was a scheme to bot Kendrick's numbers on Not Like Us. Not only that, Drake claimed that UMG, the parent company that owns his label, used an illegal scheme to attack him. Drake's lawyers accused UMG of violating the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, aka the RICO Act statute, often used in criminal cases against organized crime. But Drake didn't stop there, he filed a second action against UMG that claimed that UMG funneled payments to iHeartRadio as part of a pay-to-play scheme to promote Not Like Us on the radio. Now Drake, who is signed to UMG, feels extremely hard done by his own label where he has spent his entire career. Y'all Drake's lawyers further stated that UMG knowingly promoted Not Like Us knowing that it contained false accusations, particularly one where Kendrick repeatedly called him a certified pedo over and over. According to Drake, despite UMG knowing that these accusations were false, they proceeded with the song without asking Kendrick to change the lyrics. In the suite, Drake's lawyers wrote, UMG could have refused to release or distribute the song or required the offending material to be edited and or removed, but UMG chose to do the opposite. UMG designed, financed, and then executed a plan to turn Not Like Us into a viral mega-hit with the intent of using the spectacle of harm to Drake and his businesses to drive consumer hysteria and, of course, massive revenues. That plan succeeded, likely beyond UMG's wildest expectations. Guess I can see Drake's point. Let's start with outside of the legal shit. Somebody suing during a rap battle, I think that means you you definitely lost. Um, <laughs> like you. You lose. Well, this is no. this is this is it. We He's thought not. we thought Kendrick's album, the Not Like Us video, all that shit was the the final nail in the coffin. This is the final nail in the coffin. No. If you sue during a rap battle where no one was even harmed, Drake's lawyers claimed they already had enough evidence to pursue a defamation lawsuit against UMG. But UMG, which is also Kendrick's label, wasn't having any of that. Releasing a response saying the suggestion that UMG would do anything to undermine any of its artists is offensive and untrue. We employ the highest ethical practices in our marketing and promotional campaigns. No amount of contrived and absurd legal arguments in this pre-action submission can mask the fact that fans choose the music they want to hear. Somebody getting paid. I, I, I don't know who it's gonna be. Law fam, I can't believe this. I can't believe this is this is what it came down to. A rap battle. Hey man, this is it done got deeper than the rap battle. Like it's getting bad. Drake gang. UMG? Like, you putting your fans through some stuff they don't have to go through, bro. They already, they already out here looking crazy. I can't lie. 
Now this incident is just the latest and by far the biggest escalation in the Kendrick and Drake beef. Now though it doesn't seem like it now, but Drake and Kendrick used to be really close. They even collaborated on a couple of songs. Drake even featured Kendrick in Buried Alive interlude from his studio album Take Care. Y'all after this, Drake started working more and more with Kendrick. He even had Kendrick and ASAP Rocky open for him during his Club Paradise tour in 2012. Later that year, both Kendrick and Drake appeared in ASAP's song F***ing Problems. They seemed great together, it seemed like all they were doing when they collaborated was making hits. And that fact was cemented when Kendrick featured Drake on his song Poetic Justice. However, that would be the last time Drake and Kendrick ever worked together. Like I said, this is my brother ASAP Rocky, this is my brother Kendrick Lamar, this is my brother Chase and Cash. We all ask you just one favor. Y'all keep working on being the beautiful people that you are, and we're gonna keep giving you this music that you love so much. In San Diego. Fast forward to 2013, Kendrick seemingly took shots at Drake and other rappers in Big Sean's Song Control, claiming he had nothing but love for them, but he was trying to shake up the rap scene. When Drake was asked about what he thought of Kendrick's shots, he said that all was good, and Kendrick was just taking some ambitious shots and nothing more. Drake even said he met up with Kendrick after that and they were cool. Drake said, I saw him five days later at the VMAs and it was all love. Y'all, Drake even went as far as to say that Kendrick should have taken more shots to really spice things up. He didn't come in there on some wild, I'm in New York, fuck everybody. I almost wish he had come in there on that ish because I kind of lost a little bit of respect for the sentiment of the verse. If it's really fuck everybody, then it needs to be fuck everybody. It can't just be halfway. All right, so according to Drake, all the back and forth with Kendrick was just friendly competition, and he claimed to love it. But did he really? Not long after Kendrick's infamous control verse, Drake dropped his third studio album, Nothing Was The Same. One of the tracks, The Language, raised a lot of eyebrows because in the first verse, Drake seemed to fire back at Kendrick, not so friendly if you ask me. Of course, Drake denied taking shots, but Kendrick later admitted their relationship went downhill after Control. Seems like Drake wasn't as big a fan of Kendrick's friendly competition, as he claimed. For years, the tensions simmered with a few unclaimed disses here and there, but they mostly went their separate ways. That is, until last year, when Drake and J. Cole dropped First Person Shooter. Oh, that's when things got real, everybody seemed to love it. However, one innocent line from J. Cole's verse started one of the biggest feuds this century. I don't even think J. Cole knew this would be the outcome he was just rapping. J. Cole's now infamous line was, Love when they argue the hardest, MC, is it K-Dot, is it Aubrey, or me? We the big three like we started a league, but right now, I feel like Muhammad Ali now, when J. Cole and Drake dropped First Person Shooter, it seemed cool at first, like friendly competition, even though Cole was boldly claiming he was better than Drake on the same song. For months, everything seemed chill, but then Kendrick entered the chat. In March of this year, Kendrick dropped a response to Future and Metro Boomin's track like that, and let's just say he wasn't here for the idea of Drake or J. Cole being the greatest. Kendrick made it clear he had his own opinions on who's really on top. F sneak dissin', first person shooter, I hope they came with three switches. Mother for the big three, it's just big me. Now even though Kendrick issued his response, this might be considered a very minor thing that didn't require it to be taken further, and at this point, I don't think Kendrick or Drake was going to take it further. But J. Cole just couldn't let it go, he just had to go and make Kendrick mad. Cole released his album, Might Delete Is Later, in April and on it was the song 7 Minute Drill, which was just meant as a diss to Kendrick. The title 7 Minute Drill was a reference to J. Cole giving himself to write as an exercise. J. Cole has in the past talked about this form of this form of practice and this was his way of putting an end to Kendrick. Now even though J. Cole basically ingenited Drake and Kendrick's beef, he was the first one to tap out. In my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like like I try to like jab my nigga back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel that shit disrupts my peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and in and, and that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this this fucking Drake wasn't a fan of Cole's apology and even called him out. Fast forward a couple of days to April 13th, leaks started popping up of Drake's song Push Ups, which was supposed to be Drake's response to Kendrick. In the leaks, Drake was saying that there were more rappers who were better than Kendrick like Travis Scott and 21 Savage. Drake also dissed a lot of other people like Future, Metro Boomin, The Weeknd, and Rick Ross, but that's a story for another day. 
Because if we are to talk about all the beef Drake has with people, we will be here for a long time. It's just easier to make a separate video. Drake was a savage on push-ups, from the beat to the lyrics. Even the album art that was used was to make fun of Kendrick's height or lack thereof. Now, the reason he used shoe size for the album art was to contrast the fact that Kendrick calls himself Big Stepper, but he is 5'5". Get it, Big Stepper, short guy. Okay, this is where things get messy. On April 15th, Drake dropped push-ups, and while that was making waves, he also released what many fans are calling the most forgettable diss in this whole beef, tailor-made freestyle. This track was aimed squarely at Kendrick and included AI-generated voices of Tupac and Snoop Dogg, two of Kendrick's biggest idols. The title tailor-made wasn't random either. It was a dig at Kendrick for not responding to push-ups, implying that Kendrick was avoiding releasing anything new because Taylor Swift had just dropped her album, which was dominating the charts. Oh, and Drake also used this opportunity to clown Kendrick for working with pop artists like Taylor in the past. The shade was next level. Now this led to a series of back and forth diss tracks between Kendrick and Drake and Boom Not Like Us, and Drake officially lost the fight. Fast forward a couple of months and we are back to the beef and this time it's being settled in court. Anyways, what do y'all think about this beef? Is Drake a looser or was he set up by his label? Let me know your opinion in the comments down in the comments. But don't go anywhere because this beef is far from over. 